Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Marco. I am the head of developer relations at Ripple. I've been here for the last two, two years, but I've been working for more than 10 years facilitating uh, different solutions using uh, stable coins and crypto for cross-border payments, mostly in LATAM. And one of the, the things that brought me into the space, I think 11 or so years ago, was to see the vision behind XRP Ledger, which is about, at the time, it was a, a revolutionary idea, which is that blockchain and traditional finance were gonna create synergies. And there was gonna be a growing intersection uh, that it creating a lot of opportunities. And honestly, I, I'm, I'm amazed to see how that vision has been over the years uh, materializing. And, and honestly, I, I believe that the time today, it, it's incredible because we, we, we now are at a point when we see this technology really, really, really uh, being used massively at scale Every, everywhere around the world. So today I'm gonna talk about how businesses build on top of XRP Ledger. And to do that, essentially I will, I will walk you through how the Ledger works, which I think it, it's, it's an important thing. And then I'll go into, into detail, like what tools exist today for those businesses to actually uh, use the, the, the functionalities of the ledger. And at the end, I will talk a little bit about like the growing opportunities that are emerging in the, in the ecosystem. <laughs> I'm gonna start with a few definitions. This is important because sometimes it's, there's a little bit of confusion, but there are like three things that are very different. Ripple is a company, it's a company I work for. There is also I mean, this company contributes code to an open source project, which is the XRP Ledger. And essentially this, this open source code, it's, it's, it's run by a lot of computers around the world. And the intention is to form this, this layer one blockchain, which uses a native token to pay fees. And that's uh, what XRP, the asset is. And we're here to celebrate the three of them, but I'm gonna focus only on the XRP Ledger for, for, for this for this talk. So XRP Ledger, as I said, is a distributed network of computers uh, connected to each other peer to peer, like any other blockchain. The main goal of this blockchain is ordering transactions. That was like the big idea back in those days, what uh, Bitcoin created was this, this idea that ordering transactions in, in, in blocks uh, and giving everyone in a decentralized network visibility to, to that, uh, it's, it's, it's actually what, what, what avoids uh, and eliminates the need to have like a central authority for processing transactions and created like the entire space. So XRP Ledger focused on those things where Bitcoin was not shining, right? Bitcoin by design, it takes 10 minutes to create like new blocks. Obviously that eliminates like the possibility to use this for real time payments. Also Bitcoin has this probabilistic finality means that a transaction happens, but uh, you, you need to wait for confirmations. And that means that sometimes they can be reverted. And at the end of the day, because of the vision of serving financial institutions, like the finality on the XRP ledger works differently, is deterministic. And, and what that means is that if, when a transaction happens, like you can be 100% sure that the transaction already took place and it's irreversible. So every three seconds, there are new transactions. And you can, you can see here in the Explorer, like ev every one of these little dots has a different color. And essentially that represents a, a different transaction type. So what are those transaction types that are available? Essentially like some of these features have been, since the beginning, the ability to move value in the form of XRP or other tokens or to exchange those for other assets on the ledger. And some of these functionalities have been added uh, after, after the, the, the conception of the ledger. And that's like an, an important part of, of this technology because it has the capability to evolve over time. And that is something that I, I wanna really put emphasis on because this is a technology that over time, as more use cases are discovered for blockchains, uh, the XRP ledger is able to fulfill those needs. 
so the way that I think about then this network of, 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 of computers is sometimes as a guild. So why a guild? Because in, in the past, a guild was this group of merchants all in the same sector that they, they were joining forces to create some rules for that specific sector and in a way like create economies of scale, but also maybe paying a membership and then uh, having, having all behaving in, in, in a way that it's beneficial for everybody. In the same sense, now you can think of in the, in the space of cryptocurrency, like there are all of these companies and some of them really get a lot of value from XRP Ledger. So they really have uh, a vested interest in, in what's going on, what functionalities exist and what the future of the technology is. So to be more, like to give examples, you can think of, this, of, of these entities that run validators or, 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 or servers as companies like Ripple or exchanges. All of these companies, they, they do business in the real world uh, in, in the form of processing transactions like, like Coinbase does in, in their order books. They take a fee, they do their business off chain and it, it doesn't have to be necessarily on chain, but they have the incentive to run infrastructure and contribute value to the network because they are interested in the well functioning of it because they, they, they get a lot of utility from it. So one of the, of the features that got added in this process that requires like at least 80% of, 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 the, of the servers to agree that they are open to the activation of a new feature, that happened with NFTs. In 2022, there, there was a new proposal that creates the native functionality of, of NFTs to exist and be available in the ledger, and it got approved, meaning that got activated by everyone in this network, at least 80% plus, to be agreeing that that, that, that feature had to be available for, for everybody. And that created opportunities, that created business opportunities. So in the form of marketplaces, or even for creators, like new opportunities emerge. So now we have projects like Sermon, which is a card game. We have marketplaces allowing the exchange of NFTs, all because there was a new functionality that everyone agreed that it was valuable. Another example is, a, is it's this Shopify app that allows to, to, to have like a token-gated experience for commerce. So you get discounts depending on what NFTs you, you got. So what do be, this business, what they do, is essentially they access those through these client libraries, which is the point of, of, of this talk. It's about talking how they use existing open source libraries. It doesn't matter the programming language. It can be JavaScript, Python, Java. And they have the existing tools to essentially access each one of these, of these functionalities. So to walk you through an example for, for, for the JavaScript uh, version of it, it uses the communication protocol WebSockets. That means that these client libraries create like a bidirectional connection with, with the blockchain allowing it to, to exchange messages. So you only need like three steps to talk to the, to, to the XRP ledger. One is to open this, this connection. The second one is to create a message and send it to, to, to the blockchain. And then you will get a response and you will close the connection. It's a very simple cycle. Uh, these messages will include what is the transaction type that you're trying to use. In this case, this is just a simple payment then you will use all of these helper functions. In this case, autofill will, will fill all, all of the uh, other things that you need. It abstracts away, it avoids errors. So if, if you're missing some of the parameters that the network needs to know, all that is taken care of by these libraries. And then you will just use this method, submit and wait, and essentially you will be able to, to sign the, 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 the sign message and you will wait for a response from, from the blockchain saying that it was processed by these decentralized network of validators. And that is the whole process that, that it takes nothing for you to change the state of the blockchain for any of the transactions that I talked about. And it, it is simple, but it's powerful because these tools actually allow you to, if you are an issuer of a stable coin, let's say of Korean won, you can just with two single transactions, you can actually enable this capacity. You can, you can create tokens on the XRP ledger to move this, this one uh, around. How does that look like? Think of this issuer of Korean one. Think of a potential holder. You need two transactions. One goes from the holder 
essentially creating like an like a, it is it sends a signal to the blockchain saying I am open to having my account up to this amount of Korean won of this issuer. That that functionality, that signal, it's called trust set. And, and, and the second one, you can think of this as an opt-in configuration step. And the other one is just simply a payment that goes from the issuer to the holder. And now you have tokens. You have Korean won essentially on the ledger, easy to move around. So it's really simple but powerful. And that had been around, and it's the way that a lot of businesses today are actually getting value from XRP Ledger. And something that right now it, it, it's really interesting is that even though these functionalities exist, and, that, and right now companies like Ripple, they want to create more proposals to add more configuration opportunities for those features so that you can also make money not only off-chain, but also on-chain, be able to, to, to create monetization opportunities for those people who use the Ledger. Still, it's impossible that we can cover all of these things in one single chain. So the vision to fill that gap is to be compatible with, with other chains, which is this, is, this is exactly the need to, to see the blockchain as just like the central piece of an ecosystem that also includes other chains in, in the form of side chains. So we just heard about uh, Root Network being one of, the, one of the side chains, but really you can think of, of, of many others. Right now, the first instantiation that has been in the works for years is the EVM sidechain. And the EVM sidechain is just a sidechain that will use XRP as a native currency to pay for fees and essentially provide other type of functionality because it, it has this EVM that completely allows any, any Solidity developer to come and build, but at the same time create value because it will use, it will, it will necessitate like uh, the paying of fees with, with XRP, creating like a, a different layer on, on, on the same ecosystem and adding indirectly transactions on, 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 the, on the layer one. So the, it, it, it's completely a different stack, but at the same time forms part of the same ecosystem. It has a different consensus. It uses, uh, you know, Tendermint as consensus. It also uses the Cosmos SDK. And, and, and as I said, the, the side chain is more like a vision. I, I, I see a future where there are multiple bridges with different trade-off. For the IBM side chain, the community has really seen Axelar as a good chance to connect those chains. Uh, Axelar is a hub and spoke, really interoperability solution that allows you to move tokens using another blockchain. Uh, we will hear more about that in the future, but it's, it's really reliable and allows you to, to connect not only to a single chain, it's not like peer-to-peer, -peer, it's more like you connect to the hub and you have access to send messages. So this is powerful because we, with one of the transactions like the one I show, but that now adds like this memo field, you're able to create the same transaction on the XRP ledger and that will be routed through Axelar to, for example, Ethereum or the EVM or any of these chains and create an action in one of these smart contracts deployed on these other chains. So this is powerful. It opens opportunities for building other solutions and I'm really excited about it. If you want to learn more about what people are building, please feel free to join our Discord server. This is where the community, especially builders, start learning, interacting with others, forming groups of, 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 and teams for, for new solutions, and really this is like, like the virtual place to, to, to begin with. Uh, thank you all. We will be here talking more about what, what opportunities exist beyond technical things, also different programs. Uh, the time to build, I think, is now, and happy to, to, to answer any questions. Thank you so much.